The Gospel reading for this anniversary love feast comes from Mark's Gospel, the sixth chapter, beginning with verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. And many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. They said to him, are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. Welcome among your flock of grace. We just sang one of Count Nicholas von Zinzendorf's great hymns of the Moravian Church. This hymn is a joyful hymn. It's been historically used on what Moravians like to call festal days in the life of the church. Days when there's calls for a special celebration and remembrance. Days like today, when we celebrate the 242nd anniversary of home Moravian church. I'd like to say I lost my voice cheering for today, but it was more about a ball game or something. But today is also a day when we keep love feast together, that fellowship meal, a meal that we've continued to enjoy as Moravians since that day in 1727 when God continued to shape that little congregation in Herrenhut into one fellowship centered on Christ. God moved in that little community of believers God empowered that congregation as living for the Savior became their goal and their recognized way of life together. God sustained them, or God fed them, if you will, with the love and grace they needed for their journey, the journey of faith, a journey which is a few short years in, in a few few short years led them to be in mission for that same Savior all around the world. In today's Gospel from Mark, the whole image of being fed by God is so dramatically portrayed for us in this story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. 
Now, I know the story is familiar to most of us. Jesus and his compassion has been responding to the sick and to the needy crowds that follow him. People who Mark say are like sheep without a shepherd. Nightfall is coming and the disciples point out to Jesus as if he doesn't know that it's time to eat. And I love Jesus' comment, you give them something to eat. And the disciples say what you can always expect in the face of need, there's not enough money. But Jesus takes the resources at hand, five loaves and two fish, offers a prayer to God, blesses the food, and then sees that it's distributed to everyone. All 5,000 people are fed, Mark says, and there's food left over. The disciples, of course, are amazed. There really wasn't enough. There couldn't have been enough. There was not enough money. There was not enough. Yet all were fed. All were fed. Come feed your congregation, Zinzendorf wrote. Zinzendorf, this same one who looked out of his window after that worship service in 1727 and watched as the people of Herrenhut had been fed by the sacrament of communion. And he saw what power God's feeding has provided. People who had been at odds were now embracing. People who had refused to communicate were standing with one another in the yard talking. People who said we'll never have enough resources to make a go of this thing were sharing their hope and encouragement for the future. Zinzendorf was so amazed by this scene that he saw that he ordered food to be saved and served. He remembered that early church described in Jerusalem, how they worshiped together, took care of people in need, broke bread in homes and ate with glad and generous hearts. He remembered how they praised God and how God fed that community with new believers. How God fed that community with the empowering and encouraging leading of God's own spirit. How he fed them with the knowledge that Jesus was the Son of God who brings good news for all who hunger after bread and after the bread of life. Following that Sunday in 1727, the Moravians revived the practice of the love feast meal of the early church. It is shared just as it was a few moments ago in this room in the spirit of fellowship and unity in Christ. And through it, we praise God for being a part of God's flock of grace. Come, feed your congregation, Zinzendorf wrote. You know, on days like today, I realize that we should sing this hymn more often. That we should perhaps pray that line more earnestly and that we should certainly acknowledge the truth in that line more regularly. We should claim more often how dependent we really are on God's divine grace in this life and how the doctrine of the cross of God's sacrificial love in Christ is the sole foundation of our faith. We should proclaim like Zinzendorf with joyful acclamation that we have a Savior who shepherds us, who is always close to us, and in whom we can always follow with deep adoration. We should be open to the wonderful ways God feeds us and nourishes us in this our day. 
Some years ago on one of our early visits to Israel, we were invited to come to Star Mountain. I remember that visit because Star Mountain, if you haven't been there, sits on a hill between Ramallah and Berzait. You can see it as you approach it. It was a cold day. We got to the school and the teachers and the students invited us in and had us go straight to an area where they desired to feed us. We didn't know what we were going to get, but we got Danish cookies, which I thought was great, and some hot tea. And thinking of how cold it was outside and what a strange land we were now visiting, it warmed my heart when the children said, come, we want to feed you. Come, feed our congregation, God. What would that be like today? Come, feed the congregation of Home Moravian Church. You know, we've been here a while. We should be asking that question. And if I might be a bit presumptuous, I have three prayers for how God might come and feed us as a congregation on this 242nd anniversary occasion. A day when we always stand and live between memory and a vision that God has for us for the future. First of all, I pray that God would come and feed us with a new enthusiasm for sharing a personal faith in Christ. Enthusiasm is a remarkable word. If you don't know of its roots, it comes from the Greek words on and theos which mean in God. You see, the enthusiastic person, the Greeks believe, was one who reflected the presence of an indwelling God. The enthusiastic congregation today is one which lives with an eagerness about its life. It's a congregation that generates excitement. It has a capacity to react with gladness to the needs that it sees around it. And it displays a genuine affection for the object that motivates it. And for us, that object is Jesus Christ. In this fellowship, with the community in this very room, marking another year of life and service together, our faith in Christ is everything. Christ is the Lord of our lives. Christ is God's living word for us. Christ is God's love alive and at work in the world. And Christ is for everyone. You see, when we share our personal faith in Christ with others, that quality of antheos, of enthusiasm, radiates outwardly. It is nurturing and life-giving to others. Through us, Christ can come and feed the lives of those who desperately need to know of a loving and caring God. One Sunday, some years ago, I was at the West Door after the service, and one of our dear members, who was always known for being very friendly with visitors, came from the balcony. She was leading a young woman by the hand. And I thought she needed some kind of help. And the young woman was introduced to me as a visitor. And I was welcoming her. And she said, Pastor, can I talk with you sometime this week? And I said, sure. She said, I want to have what she has. I want to be that enthusiastic about my faith in God. I pray that God will come and feed us with a new enthusiasm for sharing a personal faith in Christ. Secondly, I pray that God will come and feed us with a new desire to build true community among all the citizens of this city, of this state, of our nation, and around this world. Think about that. There are so many forces at work in our time that are pulling people apart. 
And the church, unfortunately, is prone to be just like the disciples in Mark's gospel today. Lord, there's just not enough resources to overcome all the barriers. There's just too much violence and too much greed and too much hunger and too much racism, too much hatred. People have been like that for thousands of years. Too many people are just looking after themselves. But the God that you and I believe in knows better. And God knows that we are the body of Christ. The body of Christ, alive and active in the world, commissioned to bring God's love and reconciliation to bear wherever there are human differences. God knows when we truly desire to end the divisions that exist among people, and God knows that we can do something about them. When we truly desire to listen to others who have a different point of view from ours, a different life experience than our own, even a different perception of what community might be like, we can learn a lot. And when I read my newspaper in the mornings, it seems to me that we still have a lot to learn. But what we must remember is that as a Moravian congregation, we have a lot to give. We are a people who know in our own church experience how essential true community is, how life-giving it is, how God-given it is, and it is intended to be. It is part of our very identity as Moravians and as Christians. My friends, I urge you to work on that. Use the gifts that God has given you to work for love and justice and peace among everyone. And I pray that God will come and feed us with a new desire to build true community among all of our brothers and sisters everywhere. Lastly, I pray that God will come and feed us with a deep and sustaining love for one another. I read an article sometime back by John Killinger. And in that article, Killinger said, there are so many things that even in my best moments, I know how much life hurts. What I wouldn't give for an hour of love and togetherness when everyone is there for everyone else, when everyone cares for everyone else, when my life could feel beautiful and serene and fulfilled. He said that would be wonderful, and that can happen only through love. And of course, Killinger is right. We know that life hurts at times. We know that life can be divisive and painful. And when we come into this fellowship, we bring our hurts with us. And as followers of Christ, we know that we aren't insulated from life. We go through it with all of its ups and downs, its uncertainties and its challenges, with its joys and its sorrows. But as followers of Christ, we also know that we don't go through life by ourselves. We have the presence of God who walks with us, and we have the love of God we feel so powerfully through our genuine caring for one another. I think if at no other time and place, that hour of love and togetherness when everyone is there for everyone else takes place right here in this room, in the presence of God and all of us, a congregation gathered to be a compassionate people, gathered to be members of the household of faith, people who bring so much beauty and serenity and fulfillment to one another. Come feed our congregation. I pray that God will come and feed us anew with a deep 
and sustaining love for one another. Some time ago in an ecumenical setting, I was asked if I was glad to be a Moravian. And if I was glad to be a minister in the Moravian church, that's usually a loaded question. You have to be careful with that one. But of course I said yes. And in saying that, I was in touch again with how much gratitude I feel for how God has touched us and guided us and nurtured us as a church. On this festal day, on this anniversary celebration, I hope that you feel that gratitude as well. And I hope that God will come feed you in the coming year, just like the last. I hope God will feed you with an enthusiasm for sharing your personal faith in Christ. I pray God will feed you with a new desire to work for true community. And I pray God will give you a deep and sustaining love for one another. And in the meantime, let us continue to be joyful in our acclamation. For Zinzendorf said, O Christ, the church has hid in Lord, you as a shepherd lead us. Your flock and richly with your word and sacrament still feed us. What shall we say, lost in a maze? Our hearts bow down before you, for none sufficiently can praise, love, honor, or adore you. Amen.